Hi, I'm Kim Bourgeois Landry, and welcome to the Wonky Quilter. You have come to join me on a hot, hot summer day. Um, actually, it's not so hot. I don't know why I said that, because it's storming today. Um, but it has been so hot here, like life-threatening hot. So, uh, a stormy day. You may hear a little bit of thunder. It's just been storming and raining all afternoon. And the trees and the grass and all the plants are happy about it. And so are the plants. I mean, so are the people and animals because it is hot in southern Louisiana. We are so close to the equator, it feels like. Okay, we're not really that close to the equator, but... It's just some kind of hot. I don't know what is going on with the universe. So that explains why the lighting is kind of hazy and weird because it's just so dark outside. I couldn't get it right. Um, it has only been a few days since I last uh, posted. But I've taken a two-hour class since I talked to you. And I've taken an afternoon class. And the afternoon class was English paper piecing. I am working hard to um, kind of warm up my hands again for hand quilting since I've been trying to learn how to use my machine over the last almost a year, since October of last year. I've really not been hand stitching. And when I go, I'm going to festival this year in Houston. And when I go, what I'm taking are hand quilting classes because there are a few teachers that I've been just aching to study with and now that I'm sewing on this machine you know I could have taken this class and this class and but I really need to take the classes with um, teachers that live so far away from me and they're now we live in Louisiana uh, southern south central Louisiana and Houston is about four hours away so you know, that, that's pretty close to us to get some of the quality, high, high, high quality teachers in. Um, I'm going to take a Sashiko class or Sashiko with Pepper Corey and um, the Log Cabin class. So excited about that. And I'm taking, I think, two classes every day for almost a week. <laughs> okay, except I think I'm taking two days off. But I have, I'm probably way overdoing it. I live close to festival, but um, I'm probably not going to go. I mean, I'm not going to go very often because it's overwhelming and because I am an introvert and I, I think I'm going to be overwhelmed. Um, it'll be better for me to be in classes than walking around and just the hubbub of, you know, thousands of people and sights and sounds. So, um I don't know. I'm hoping I'm doing the right thing. But I did take a, my first English paper piecing class with uh, Jamie, was my teacher's name. She was really good. Duval is her last name. It took me a minute. I couldn't think of it. We got a four fat quarters. And she was really, uh, I think that she was very thoughtful the way that she chose these fabrics. She chose this fabric, which has a very strong... Um, and but a simple repeat um, it doesn't feel so busy then she picked a um, strong repeat that is very busy and feels flamboyant and then she picked um, an uncommon I mean okay look this is a purple background with some orange and red um, mushrooms on it some of the women were like oh, I want to pick that but you know what she taught us to look at unusual, interesting fabrics in a different way. And the fact is, this has some really cool, simple shapes. Um, like half of this. That's a nice half, you know, quarter of a circle. This is a nice shape. Then there's all of this um, empty space right here. I mean, really, when you're English paper piecing, you're fussy cutting. And my, nobody told me this, but I know what the word fussy means. I'm fussy about a lot of things, which means I'm very particular about the way that food is placed on my plate. Let's put it that way. I'm kind of fussy about it. So, when you have fabric that is $15 a yard, $15.99, $12.99, um, and you can afford 
to be fussy about where you put your template. We were using this template. Oh God, where is it? Okay, which is a honeycomb, a one inch honeycomb. And although it's called a honeycomb, it's elongated. So it's, it's a really interesting, pretty shape. Um, and she was teaching us how to, you know, place it in a different way so that you're seeing the fabric differently. And I recognized right away, this wasn't gonna be just about cutting out pretty shapes, like right here, what I thought English paper piecing was. Oh, there's a mushroom, let me cut the mushroom out. Okay, I'll have a bunch of mushrooms. But what she was doing was cutting out, okay, she didn't actually cut out part of a mushroom, but she may have cut out part of a mushroom and was already imagining if she put another half piece next to it, would that look like maybe a butterfly? Okay, I'm making that up. That's not what she did. But look, this looks like a butterfly wing when, when you're careful about how you cut it. So... I had not recognized that this was going to be about that. And that's because, um, first of all, I don't know much about sewing, okay? Second of all, I'm a scrappy quilter. I call myself the wonky wonky quilter. And y'all know, I kind of, I don't buy fabric by color. I don't buy it by design. I don't, in other words, I don't buy it by designer, although I recognize the names and I have a strong appreciation for all the designers. This is from the conservatory, and I think it's really cool fabric. Um, I buy fabric like, like this. I buy little pieces of fabric, you know. It might be bigger pieces. It might be pieces like this. There are some pieces. You know, I might be buying this piece. Really pretty, cheerful, spring. And it's a bigger piece, but it is a scrap. It's been cut. Do you see? I'm sure that this was used to make um, a shirt or a dress for a young child, something like that. So I, I buy just if I like the quality of the fabric. This must have been used. This is a heavier canvas. This would make a great tote bag. Um, but I did buy it because I thought that these shapes would be nice for some kind of fussy cutting, but it's heavy. So I am unaccustomed to looking at big pieces of fabric like that. I learned a lot from this woman and she was so good at it. You should have seen the shapes that she was able to discover in the fabric because she wasn't so much saying, oh my God. I love lavender background with mushrooms. She was looking at all of these interesting shapes and seeing what else she could create out of them that the um, designer did not intend. So the creative urge was high in her mind. I mean, you know, she's got it going on. So, um, I was completely overwhelmed. I recognized right away that this was a, a skill set that I was unprepared for. I had been prepared for um, having a nice, a nice cutting instrument. I had a, a, I had the little glue gun. Oh my God, we have to talk about this because that was new to me. Hello, glue gun for the new millennium. Not a glue gun, a glue stick. It's like a new fangled glue stick. But let me get back to that later. What I had not realized was that it wasn't so much, like I said before, cutting out the, the images that were in the fabric or how to even recognize a pattern repeat. Now I've sold high-end furniture. I was a sales manager at a high-end furniture store um, for quite a few years. So I do understand pattern repeat. However, I have not been looking for pattern repeat for a long time because I'm buying little pieces of, um, I'm just trying to buy quality fabric in colors that are appealing to me, but I'm not, I have not been looking for that kind of thing. So the recognition that I was gonna need to, I really was going to have to retrain my eyes to focus on a different thing and not look at the overall color scheme it wasn't about red and orange and a tiny bit of pink and yellow. 
It was more, how many of these orange mushrooms do you see? How can you cut these in ways that, that it may look like butterfly um, wings? Or how can you look at the mushroom stem to make part of, you know, um, a flame stitch for going around this square? Once I got home and was by myself in my own in, in my own little, you know, um, intimate environment, I did so much better with it. Then I gave myself a, a day off. So I watched videos and I took some of, uh, you know, trying to really memorize some of the tips that um, Jamie gave us. And I watched some videos. I watched this one lady's videos called um, Miss Hillbilly. I'm half hillbilly, so I can say it that way, okay? My mom's from Virginia. Totes my goats would have called herself. Maybe not a hillbilly. I hope that's not offensive. But anyway, this is the woman. This is what she calls herself. And she specializes in English paper piecing. I got some great tips from her. So check out her videos on YouTube, too. There's room enough for all of us, you know. And hopefully, I'm hoping... Somebody who has a successful YouTube channel will suggest mine one day. So, um, there's room for all of us. Um, anyway, today, I said, I'll start sewing. It's all stormy outside. I don't know if you can hear the rain. And what I'll do is keep the TV off. I will just sit quietly, peacefully. Mm, I'm by myself. My husband's in New Orleans. He's on his way home this afternoon, driving in this weather. And I put my phone on um, YouTube and said, let me just look up kind of a video. I have a light on that has a magnifying glass and I put my phone real close to it so my eyes could just go like this. And I could watch and not just, I was listening to a documentary while and just watching it on something I'm not really even interested. I just picked out of the blue, Elizabeth Taylor jewelry auction so they were telling the story of her life and who gave her this piece of furniture uh, for not furniture who gave her this piece of jewelry how she scored it what it was worth at the time how she received it who it belonged to before her she like one of the pieces was this gigantic pearl that had belonged to all the royalty in Spain and somehow she is in possession of it so I'm watching this as and you know the whole time I'm, look, let me give you one. I'm following the directions of my teacher, you know, three, put three together at a time, and then you put the next piece on, like this, okay? I think that's it. Like this, like this. Next piece. It's not the exact directions. I didn't say it right, but anyway. So, I'm watching the thing and I'm thinking, Oh my goodness, look at those diamonds. Oh, look at Paul Newman's eye. Oh, look at, you know, Elizabeth Taylor's eye. Ooh, look at Richard Burton. I'm stitching, I'm stitching. And it's like tiny, tiny stitches. She told us on the top of these paper pieces to grab one or two little threads, not much. Pull through and pull, I, I did it. And then I did this. Okay, that might not look like anything to you. Except look at this one. This, this piece right here. Call from David L. A. Should have been right here. Call and not right here. David L. A. Do you see that? Just like that phone Call ringing right now. David L. A. Because I was watching an insignificant diamond movie star I was starstruck watching this mesmerized kind of thing. I messed up. Like what box? So frustrated. I had to walk away for several hours. Do you know what I do when I'm frustrated? I swept the floors. That's how bad it was. I'm just now coming back to my table and hopefully I will have enough gumption to know how to even rip this. I hope I can because it's so snug. Those of you who know, those of you who have been watching my videos knows 
that I am partial to the seam rippers. I have a strong connection to these cutting instruments, these precision cutting instruments. It'll be to find one that won't tear the fabric because the the connection is so snug. And when you're only picking up one or, I mean, being able to get in, I'm gonna have to find the finest blade. I'm hoping that this one will work. Can you see that? We'll see. I might be on next week talking about new seam rippers. I'm hoping that this one will work. I. Someone told me one time that they used a, um, like a scalpel type of thing. And I totally died laughing because it was like, I'd be cutting fabric left and right. I could not use something like that. But I think that person was an English paper piecer. Because, I mean, it is going to be so delicate. You're going to be cutting like one thread between two connecting threads. I mean, it's going to be tight. So we'll just have to wait and see. So frustrating. What I did want to tell you is that this is what we're using. One inch honeycomb. It's a great, great little piece and it makes a beautiful, beautiful little pieces. Also, this is what um, Jamie Duvall taught us. Is that when you get these, if you have um, a hole punch or anything that can put a little hole in them, once you have a whole block finish or many many blocks and you're ready to start connecting those blocks that when you want to pull the papers out if there's already a hole using something like a um, a crochet hook will be very easy to pull these out and without damaging them because because these can be used again quite often do you know this amazing now, Miss Hillbilly, Miss Hillbilly, you know what she said? She has been, she does English paper, paper piecing all the time. She had all kind of tips. The one that I thought I would share with you is that she said, if you have a choice, buy the pink glue instead of the blue. The ones that have the pink um, glue or the refills by pink. She said for some reason what she has found out, this is her opinion, so I'm not saying it's true, I'm just saying it's her opinion. The blue goops up a little bit. I have noticed that. Just in, you know, since Sunday, today is Wednesday. This does get a little goopy. She said the pink does not. It's just a nice, clean, thin layer every time you put it on the paper. You know, it's a nice, thin layer, and it doesn't goop up like the blue. She doesn't know why. She, it's just what she has found by using these many, many times. More than one company makes it. The one that I purchased, I'm not saying it's the best. It's just the one I purchased is the um, Soline. Very nice. This was like a new thing to me. I had no idea that this was a thing. Um, these pins are very important for uh, tracing out, and of course it'll come out with the heat. What are these called? Oh, friction. Yeah, the friction pins. So the one I have is red. I got this one um, from Lola Pink, and um, it was a gift to me um, from the sock hop, and it was loads of fun. Anyway, another thing I worked on this was a class I took, a very beginning class. But as you can tell by my stitches, they're not looking too good. And this has not been ironed. Sasha Co Stitching, which is a Japanese form of stitching. And um, a lot of times it was done to repair things. But in Japan, when you repair something, your job or how they like to think of it is that the repairs make it more beautiful than it was originally. So, it's about learning how to, in each space, to have the same exact and very measured stitches everywhere. I just took a two-hour class, so I'm not that great at it yet. But I really think, and look, this is like, do you see? All of them have a, an empty spot right here. So, that is a pattern outside of the stitches. 
and this is the underside. So when you learn how to do it really well, the back will be beautiful like the front, do you know? Or maybe even sometimes prettier. Anyway, that's all I have for you today, but I hope that, um, I don't know. I think I just wanted to tell y'all how aggravated I was. Okay, I'm not real. I'm not beating myself up. It's just really this kind of stitching, this very, very fine stitching that is not supposed to show. You can't be looking at movie stars and big, big diamond rings and expect to get this right. Like, you have to be singular and centered and dedicated to working on this one thing. Um, that was my lesson for the day. Again, I'm Kim Bourgeois Landry. I'm the wonky quilter, as you can tell. Wonky wonky. Come back and join me next time. Okay, see ya. Bye.